Welcome again everybody to a new video and in this video we're going to talk about a subject that is uh, always uh, asked and uh, uh, this subject is whether the tooth or the root of the tooth is inside the maxillary sinus or the image of the tooth is superimposed on the image of the maxillary sinus. From an, ato an, an anatomical point of view, the roots uh, are the ex the rule is that the roots of the apices or whichever part of the root is superimposed on the uh, image of the sinus. The exception is that the root extends actually or physically inside the sinus and this is very seldom. We go back again to the problem of two-dimensional image and uh, here you have uh, you have uh, uh, width and you have length but you mo we miss the depth. We miss the uh, a third dimension which is the depth so images will appear stacked one over the other which gives sometimes a false impression of uh, 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 the root apex extend inside the maxillary sinus okay how would we do how would we know this from the intraoral periapical radiographs first of all as we we know that the exception is the root extends actually inside the uh, sinus. Second, we follow the the flow of the maxillary sinus. The flow of the maxillary sinus is that thin radio-opaque line which demarcates the lower border of the maxillary sinus. Now we follow the, uh, the uh, course of the uh, flow of the sinus at the junction of the roots with the uh, with the sinus, if there is any discontinuity in the root, uh, sorry, in the uh, flow uh, of the sinus, see here. If there is any discontinuity, it means that the flow of the sinus has been pierced by the uh, by the uh, root. So first of all, we follow the continuity of the radio opaque border or flow of the uh, maxillary sinus. The second thing we do is that we follow the PDL of the uh, surrounding the root from the crest of the bone. Don't follow the uh, uh, this thin line which is the lamina dura. Lamina dura sometimes it disappears by the exposure factors or by disease or by overexposure, whatever, but the thing that does not disappear is the radiolucent line that closely follows the uh, uh, anatomy of the of the root, and this is the periodontal ligament space. This is the periodontal ligament space. You follow the periodontal ligament space all around the uh, apex of the root. So you start from the alveolar crest, and then you follow all the way around. If the PDL discontinues at the junction when it enters into, when it crosses the uh, um, uh, flow of the sinus and it disappears while it is in the sinus, it means that the root is actually uh, inside the sinus. But if the shadow of the PDL, this radiolucent line, continues to be present all the way down, as you can see in here, then this means that the image of the roots are superimposed on the maxillary side. Let's have another radiograph. This is a radiograph, another radiograph in which we have, this is apparently away from the sinus, and then we will see the apex of this second premolar. You can see that the apex of the premolar, this is the uh, more radio-opaque line. So this is the palatal root and this is the buccal root because it, is, it has a lesser radio opacity. You follow the PDL. The PDL is continuous and it only touches the floor of the maxillary sinus. So 
step number one follow continuity step step number two you follow the PDL let's go to the six this is the PDL okay now this is the crossing between the two lines the uh, PDL and the uh, uh, flow of the sinus you see that the PDL is continuous all around if you go to the palatal root the same happens the PDL is continuous all over the uh, root and it ends up here and if you we go to the distal buccal root and this is the distal buccal root it is continuous it means that this is the image is superimposed the same goes for the uh, for the uh, upper seven continuous line and then you will have the PDL continuous for the three roots This is another radiograph where you can see here that the premolar is closed. Of course, we have to take into consideration that the sinus, the size of the sinus varies. Okay, sometimes see the sinus starts from the canine tooth, and sometimes it is only limited to, to the molars. So this is anatomical variation. So. The canine, the apex of the canine is not showing, so forget it, don't think about it. Then we will go to the upper first premolar, and then we can see here that the line of the flow of the sinus is continuous. There is no interruption. And the second thing is that the PDL is present. Have a look here on this premolar. This is first root, and this is the second root apex. Now this image is an elongated image. You can see the difference between the palatal root over here and the mesiobuccal and the distal buccal roots. So uh, the effect is also exaggerated by the way the image is exposed. We have to have always the parallel technique where we will have the uh, uh, minimal or no superimposition of uh, elongation or shortening of these structures. But uh, here, uh, because the image is uh, uh, elongated see the difference between the palatal cusp and the buccal cusp you can't have this difference so this is because of the elongation anyways the the same rule applies PDL is continuous all the way around the roots and this is the palatal roots so, uh, of the upper seven see how long it is and this is the same thing over here okay uh, so uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, what I what we want to know here is that the image is also affected by how the uh, exposure was done. Another route where you can see a diseased uh, uh, tooth. Okay, uh, you will see a diseased tooth over here. Uh, there is apparently a periapical radiolucency surrounds the apex of the of the uh, tip of the uh, palatal root of the uh, uh, of the uh, upper six what you need to do here is that if you are using a the no, uh, the analog films the chemically processed films you better have uh, or better make use of a magnifying lens magnifying lens adds a lot to your uh, information. If you are using a digital uh, radiograph, then you have the uh, the uh, tool of magnification. Now let's see this case. This is the flow of the sinus, and you can see at this area, the flow of the sinus almost disappears, and then goes and continues over here, and then. Now, let me enlarge the image a little bit more. If you are in a concern about the, di the continuity, I can see a line here with magnification. I will go to the second step, which is the PDL. The PDL has not disappeared. See the line over here, the junction? The PDL has not disappeared when the images of the, two of the PDL uh, over the root uh, over the uh, over the uh, floor of the sinus, uh, uh, it is it remains continuous. Okay, so it means that this is a superimposed image. The same goes for this one. 
see the PDL for the palatal root up till here and then it enlarges which means that there is a, a, a what we call ballooning uh, uh, of the uh, of the uh, PDL okay so it, uh, it means that the uh, 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 so it means that the PDL here is continuous and there is no reason for con uh, for concern about uh, this uh, this uh, uh, <coughs> two uh, root being inside the maxillary sinus if we uh, if we zoom out again uh, see the this is the line over here and the PDL of the of the uh, 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 roots are continuous. Okay. Another case over here. The this is the floor of the maxillary sinus. It goes here and then it continues. So this is cross cross over the uh, 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 root. Again, I want to follow the PDL. The PDL here. This is what concerns me is the lines of junction one, two. These are the lines of the junction one and two. These lines are continuous. The PDL is not affected. This is an extracted tooth. This is the, of course, we don't have any PDL anymore here. What we have is the uh, lamina dura, which is the socket of the tooth. One, this is the distal buccal root and this is the palatal root over here okay now let's go again and follow the PDL this is uh, the, sorry the flow of the sinus continuous continuous okay and here you can see this this is the junction of the palatal root over here and over here so again this is a superimposed area the same of, co of course goes for the um, a maxillary molar, a second molar, flow of the sinus. See th how big is this uh, sinus? It goes up to include even the uh, upper wisdom tooth. Or the cont cont continuous um, uh, flow of the sinus, okay? And the PDL is also continuous. This is the palatal, this is the mesiobuccal, and this is the distobuccal over here. The upper eight is also. Uh, casts its shadow on the sinus, so it is not inside it. This is the floor of the sinus, and this is the PDL of the tooth. Uh, clear, uh, uh, there is no uh, discontinuation. Another interesting case over here. You see, this is the floor of the sinus. Okay, and uh, 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 we have here a lesion and there is apparently no, no root canal filling for the tooth so the PDL see how it balloons over here and it is surrounded by a, a sclerotic border okay. uh, there is a periapical uh, pathology anyways let's go to the uh, flow of the sinus this is the flow of the sinus see it is continuous and the PDL is also continuous here for this tooth and for the other tooth if let us magnify and see. Okay, see this is the this is the flow of the sinus over here, and it is all continuous and there is no problem in it. Okay. Another interesting case. Okay over here, over here, and then it goes all the way up. And apparently there is a pathology also that has affected the palatal root, see? And you can see also some uh, traces of external resorption in the palatal root. In all instances, the what happens here is that, see this junction between the uh, root and the, uh, uh, sorry, uh, in all instances you will see here the continuous line over here this is the flow there is no discontinuity of the PDL 
which means that it is again uh, superimposed.